I've been putting together a major audio gear and video upgrade for my studio. And when I reached out to O-Ray for some help with video switching, they let me know about their brand new BK202A HDMI 2.1 2x2 matrix. This is something a lot of us have been waiting for for a long time, so let's check it out. In the interest of full disclosure, O-Ray did send me the BK202A, but I have not been compensated for this review. As usual, my opinions are my own, and they won't see this review before it's published. Now, a while ago, I looked at their BK22 HDMI 2.1 switch and splitter, and I was very impressed with the performance and quality, but the one thing it couldn't do was give me a separate display on each of the two outputs. So the new 2x2 matrix is going to allow us to choose between the two inputs and display them independently on each of the two outputs. So that's really useful here. So I put together a few video and audio tests to help you decide if this is right for you. Taking a look, we get nice packaging with this unit as I expect from O-Ray. Inside we have the matrix itself, we'll put it out of the way. And then we have a number of accessories. We get a remote control for this and it's IR, so that also means this will integrate nicely with some other systems. You're also gonna get a power adapter. It's five volts DC and you'll get the plug that's appropriate to your region. Then we have the unit itself. This is heavy, very well made, solid metal construction. You can see we have vents on either side to dissipate the heat. On the front, we have indicators for both outputs. We also have switches. We have an EDID control and a service port. On the back, two ins, two outs, as well as optical and analog audio extraction with the power source. Now that you've seen the side-by-side -side footage of the original and the capture through the 202A, you can see here that there's no difference on the scopes in terms of color, black levels, everything looks exactly the same. So the unit isn't modifying the output here in any way, and I wouldn't expect it to do. It's not a scaler, it's not a re-encoder, but it's nice to see here that at least on this one frame that I captured, it is absolutely the same before and after using the matrix. Now, I was really pleased to see that the BK202A offers audio extraction in addition to audio pass-through on HDMI. So we get SPDIF digital output over optical cable, as well as analog left and right channel over 3.5 millimeter jack. Now that you've had a chance to hear the audio comparison, let's take a look at the frequency analysis. And you can see that it's pretty faithful comparison here from the original to the output through HDMI, optical, as well as even the left and right analog. There was a slight bump in the presence that I could hear in the analog, and it is visible here, but it's, it's very minor. So overall, the conversion was really good with this. Let's take a look at the dynamics. Now looking at the dynamic range comparison, we can see the original output through HDMI as well as optical output are virtually identical. There's a slight drop in dynamic range with the analog output. And of course, we're getting that through a digital to analog converter that's built into the unit. So I expect it to be somewhat different. So if you can, the best choices here, of course, are gonna be digital audio output. 
But if you need to use the analog, certainly I didn't find anything wrong when listening in the comparison. There's a slight difference in the tone, but again, it wasn't objectionable. So overall, analog audio extraction and optical extraction works well on this device. Now, I know many of you are going to want to use this with modern consoles, Xbox Series X, PS5, maybe even PC. And so I did some tests with 4K 120. And looking at it here on my Samsung Q70T, we can see here that 4K 120, there are no issues with color or lag that I could perceive, no screen tearing, so it works very well. And now I switched over to VRR, so again, you could see that, no issues. I didn't really pick up any blur here with Forza. Everything seems to work very well through this matrix, again, at least in my combination with the Samsung TV. Now, I wanted to show you the unit up close. And on the front, you can see we have an IR receiver. And again, that'll work with the included remote. But also, if you want to use this with a universal remote or switching system, even put it away in a cupboard with a repeater. Now, we also get a power indicator, as well as indicators for which output we're seeing on each display. And you can see we have individual switches we can control between the two any combination that we want to output to the displays. Then we also have the EDID control, and that's really great to see implemented here. Right now I have it set in the copy mode, and all that's doing is allowing each display to send the information back to the source so it knows what kind of resolution and audio is being supported. But we can set specific modes, there's actually seven of them to choose from, or if we want to force a specific frequency, uh, maybe 120, uh, 120 hertz 4K, or maybe it's going to be 1080p, we can do that. And as long as our displays will support the frequency, they will show that. So nice to be able to preset that. There's also a USB port. That's for debugging and mostly for firmware updates. So you keep an eye on their website to see if there's any updates for the unit. Now on the back, we have just the connectors. And I have to say, like, everything is very solid. You see when I push it, there's really no movement on any of the, uh, of the contacts, any of the connectors. And that's something, again, that's great to see. That with the metal housing, really solid controls. I would say if you're going to give this a lot of use, it's going to last a long time. Now, I'll have a link in the description below with full specifications. But suffice to say that this unit supports pretty much all the modes available under HDMI 2.1. And that's really good to see here. So while 8K isn't really mainstream yet, you're going to get access to those 4K modes like 120 as well as VRR. Now, it's important to know that this matrix will not make your display show something that it isn't meant to do. So if your display doesn't support VRR, this is not going to give that to you. But it will allow you to use VRR if you have G-Sync, FreeSync, or HDMI 2.1 VRR. So it does let you use that. Now, if you have two displays connected up and you want to show the same source on each one, the system is always going to default to the lowest spec between the two monitors because this is not re-encoding the signal. This is passing it through. So if one of your TVs will show 4K 120 and the other will only show 60 hertz, it's going to default to 60 hertz because, again, we're not re-encoding here. And that's something that requires very, very expensive equipment and also introduces lag, which is something that's really not usable for gaming situations anyways. So that's just something that you need to know. But where this matrix comes in is being able to, again, have two separate sources and switch independently with two displays. And while I couldn't test all modes with every device, I tried to choose some of the very popular options with both PC and console, various resolutions, as well as audio. And I had really good success with this device as I did earlier with the BK22. And so if you have more than one HDMI source and you wanna share them between two separate displays, this can be a really good solution for you. It's not gonna give you features that your displays or your sources don't have, but it's gonna allow you to take advantage of pretty much everything that's currently available with HDMI 2.1. This is one of the first very affordable matrix to come out and it's really high quality. So I have to say, I think the value is good here. I would definitely recommend it. And if you're looking for other options to level up your video or audio quality, check out one of the other videos on the screen.